In this episode, we're talking about electronics engineering, ECAD, and leveraging enterprise class software. We'll walk through start to finish, building a complete circuit board, give you a hands-on overview of what you're up against. Stick around. If you're like me, you spend a lot of time on your projects, and whether it's design, modeling, ECAD, or MCAD, you spend a lot of time engineering every aspect. And when you're working against a timeline, the last thing you want is software push to introduce some problem that breaks your work. Unfortunately, this happens all too often. In reevaluating my tool chain, or rather the combination of software tools that I use to do my work, I realized that over the last year, the majority of my time was wasted correcting compatibility, synchronization, or issues in software packages that were just evolving, changing their design or merging their capabilities. While that's a noble undertaking, it's also high risk for the software and for the end user. In an attempt to mature my process and evolve my skill sets, I've decided to drive my tool chain and work to leverage industry standard engineering software solutions. It's a little costly, but well worth the investment. As such, over the next few months, I'll be driving my work onto engineering grade platforms, mature tools centered around specific engineering disciplines of say art, design, MCAD, ECAD, and development. I'll be sharing that with you. And to kick off that journey, I'm starting with ECAD, one of the single most frustrating workflows for me over the past couple of years. I've tried just about every entry level platform and been continually faced with synchronization, compatibility, rework, and platform growing pains. Now's a good time to mention that this video is sponsored by Altium Designer the industry gold standard in full life cycle electronics design and engineering. Unlike other ECAD systems with fragmented environments and limited capabilities, Altium has a mature unified electronics design and development environment with all the tools you need to get the job done. Built around a centralized design data model, the simplified and dynamic interface is both easy to use, extremely flexible and dynamic, meaning it changes depending on the context of what's being performed. A highly efficient way of incorporating a lot of capability without cluttering the UI. In the description below, I've provided a link to a free trial of Altium Designer. And over the coming months, I'll be leveraging and demonstrating Designer as my primary electronics tool for projects. I encourage you to download it, follow along, and explore Altium Designer along the way. In addition to the Designer platform, there are two other ECAD products in the Altium family. Circuit Maker, which is a free cloud-based ECAD social platform, and Circuit Studio, which is a mid-grade, more advanced ECAD tool. They all share similar fundamental design conventions and process metaphors, so you can grow your way into their enterprise-grade solutions at your own pace. If you're not familiar with Altium Designer, chances are it's more capable than your current ECAD software. And while it can be a bit overwhelming to get started, today we'll be walking through a basic example from start to finish, hopefully give you enough information to make the best use of your trial. So let's dive in. Launching the Altium Designer, the main interface is super clean, but don't let that fool you, Designer is an ECAD powerhouse. The dynamic menus across the top are updated based on the type of document that you currently have open. On the left hand side you have a project panel where a hierarchy of your project resources will reside. Things like documents, settings, libraries, and generated files all be organized here. Additional panels can be opened from the lower right corner of the screen. Keep in mind that the menus, menu items, and list of available panels will change depending on the type of project file that's open. To get things going, let's first create a project. Right click, add new project. Let's create it using the default project type, give it a name, make it local, Let's leave project parameters blank, but you can think of those as metadata that you can associate to design objects in the system. Click Create. The project is added to the hierarchy. Next, let's add a schematic. Right click, Add New to Project, Schematic. The schematic is added. Now look around at the menus and panels and see how they change for the schematic view. Let's add some components to the schematic. Click on Panels, then Components to display the component search panel. The component panel allows you to search for specific component types. Clicking the filter in the upper left hand corner allows you to narrow the list to exact component properties. Let's add a couple components. Right click and place the object. Use the spacebar to rotate it as you're placing the component on the schematic. Add some more components. Next let's add a ground and power port. And a power connector while we're at it. With components on the schematic, next let's wire it up. Once complete, if we validate schematic, we see that there are errors. This is because uh, we need to identify designators for each of the components. We could do this manually by changing the designator property for each component, but there's an easier way. It's to use the schematic annotation tool to automatically assign them. 
Click Tools, Annotation, Schematics. Select the desired order of processing, click Update Change List, then accept changes to create an ECO or engineering change order. Press Validate to confirm the changes we want to perform. If the changes check out, then we can execute the changes. This process ensures that all changes are validated, planned, and executed. No magic happening here. We have complete control of the process. Executing the changes performs the component designator updates. Validate the schematic one final time and no errors. Well, let's add a PCB to the project. Right click, add new to project, PCB. The PCB is added. Again, look around at the menus and panels and see how they've changed for the PCB view. Lots of new features. Next, let's import a DXF for the board outline. It's pretty common that we have irregular shapes or mount holes for the design. In this case, we'll just use the DIY engineering logo. Select the correct units and as a component, then click OK. Select the outline, then click design, board shape, define from selected objects, and voila, the board has a shape. But let's cut out those holes. Select an inner hole, then select tools, convert, create board cutout from selected primitives. Do it one more time, and the custom board shape's done. Now let's set the origin. Click Edit, Origin Set, then click where the origin should be placed. Okay, now we've got a schematic and a cool board. Next, let's transfer the components from the schematic to the board. Select the schematic document. Click Design, Update, PCB document. Click the Validate Changes, Confirm No Errors, then click Execute Changes. Next, in this case, let's move components to their locations. Now this is just an arbitrary circuit, let's make it look legit. Now that they're in place, we could use auto route, but that's way too easy. Let's interactively route the components. Click on one of the air wires to run it to the end point. Click on the destination for each wire and you're complete. When complete, we run a DRC or design rules check. By clicking the tools, design rules check, confirm the dialog settings, then click run design rules check. The design rules check report will be displayed. If there are any errors, you can click on them to allow you to inspect the violation. Otherwise, you're good to go. So we've got a schematic, a circuit board. Let's view the circuit board in 3D mode. Click on View, 3D Layout Mode. Looks great, right? Next, to integrate this with a MCAD solution, we would export this as a step file and pass it on to the mechanical step. Click on File, Export, Step 3D. Give it a name, click OK, then let's select the features. Then, in your favorite MCAD software, load up the step file to integrate into your design. This could be used for placement, clearance, all sorts of mechanical engineering activities. Now, switching back into Altium Designer, if the design looks good, we can generate the bill of materials by clicking Report, Bill of Materials. It's that easy. To get this thing fabricated, we can add CAM documents to generate Gerber files for the design. With the PCB selected, we click on the File, Fabrication Outputs, Gerber Files. Select your desired configuration settings and click OK. The CAM document will be configured and added to the project. With the design CAM file selected, click on the file export to generate the Gerber files. The same process can be performed for assembly outputs to generate pick and place placement files. Keep in mind, while we demonstrated a complete board process today, we've really just scratched the surface on the capabilities of Altium Designer. In the coming weeks, we'll be leveraging some more advanced capabilities of Designer as I work through some new holiday projects. So stay tuned for some really cool stuff. Remember, there's a link to a free trial to Altium Designer in the description below. Download it, install it, rewind this video, and walk through those steps, and you'll see how capable and easy to use Altium Designer is. That's going to do it for today. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. It'll keep you in the know on when new videos are released. If you like this particular video and want to see more hands-on engineering videos, give it a big thumbs up. That's kind of how the system works and it lets me know you care. As always, be safe, have fun, and I can't wait to see you next time. Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also allow me to bring better content. Also check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there too.